something about the dural venous sinuses, how exactly the venous sinuses are draining and then we will also understand that what is the direction of the blood flow. At times people do understand the dural venous sinuses but they don't understand that what is the direction of the blood flow and they get stuck in the clinical questions. Like if somebody give you a clinical question that there is a tumor growing in the confluence of sinuses. So which sinus will be obstructed? To understand this question, to answer, under, answer the questions like these, you should know that where the si blood is starting, where it is going, which sinus it goes into, how it comes out and all. So guys, look at some dural folds here, again with the help of these pictures. Look at certain dural folds and these dural folds are holding the dural venous sinuses. Now, the dural folds, the dural folds which are required to form the dural venous sinuses are named as Fox cerebri. There will be Fox cerebelli. There is tentorium, guys. Tentorium cerebelli. Tentorium cerebelli. And there will be diaphragma. Diaphragma cellae. Diaphragma cellae that is covering the cellar tersica. So we call it diaphragma cellae. Fox cerebri. Fox cerebelli, tentorium cerebelli and diaphragma cellae. Fox means sickle shaped. Anything which is shaped like a sickle is called as a fox. So if you look at this image here, this here is a fox cerebri. It is basically dividing the two cerebral hemisphere. It is present between the two cerebral hemisphere here. So this is fox cerebri here. So this dural fold here is fox cerebri. A similar dural fold will be present between the two cerebellum which is below here that is called as a fox cerebelli. It's a very very small fold. You can see the fold and sinus together only. But see what is to be noted first that fox cerebri is having two dural venous sinuses one in the upper margin and one in the lower margin. The sinus guys and again the important thing is the direction of blood flow. This sinus is present in the sagittal plane above. So we call it what sinus? It's a superior sagittal sinus. Whereas the one in the lower part, this is called as the inferior sagittal sinus. Superior sagittal and inferior sagittal sinus. The blood flow is like this, guys. Superior sagittal sinus is carrying the blood backward like this. Inferior sagittal sinus is also carrying the blood backward and downward like this. <coughs> then you see this inferior sagittal sinus is draining the blood into this sinus which is running backward. Now this is taking the blood backward guys. This sinus here which is taking the blood backward, this sinus is called as a straight sinus. This sinus taking the blood backward here that is called as a straight sinus. Right, that's straight sinus. This straight sinus when it takes the blood backward here at this point here, this is also receiving the blood from below, coming from Fox cerebelli. Coming from Fox cerebelli, now the name of this sinus, because this sinus is in relation to the occipital bone, so we call it occipital sinus. This sinus is called as an occipital sinus, which is taking the blood upwards. It is taking the blood upwards. Now you can see superior, inferior, straight, they are all kind of meeting at this point here. And that's why this area is called as the confluence of sinuses. This is called as the confluence, confluence of sinuses. Meeting point of sinuses, guys. Meeting point is confluence. It's a confluence of sinuses or meeting point of the sinuses. Here. Once the blood reaches the confluence of sinus, see, our main motive is to take this blood out of the cranial cavity. We have to drain this blood out. How are you going to drain this blood out here? From the confluence of sinuses, the blood is going into this sinus and that sinus is present in the tentorium cerebelli. We call it what? We call it the transverse sinus. I'm going to show that in the next picture also, but just, just write it for, uh, uh, just remember it. This sinus here is called as the transverse sinus. I'm writing TS. The TS there stands for the transverse sinus. That's the transverse sinus, right? Now from the transverse sinus, the blood ultimately goes through this sinus downward into the jugular foramen. Now this is where the jugular foramen will be present. It is covered with dura mater as of now. And this sinus here is called as a sigmoid sinus. Look at the shape guys. This, this sinus 
is like a sigma shaped here. So we call it what sinus? That's a sigmoid sinus. That sinus over there is called as a sigmoid sinus. And what you can see that this uh, sigmoid sinus is meeting with one sinus which is coming here and then they together are going out of the jugular foramen here. Now understand one thing here, in this picture, what part I am highlighting here guys, this bone here is a petrous part of temporal bone. Whatever I have highlighted here for you, this is a petrous part of temporal bone. So you can see a sinus running on the upper margin of petrous temporal bone and on the lower margin of petrous temporal bone. And that is why these sinus are called as superior petrosal sinus and inferior petrosal sinus. Guys, this sinus here is SPS, superior petrosal sinus which is taking the blood backwards and this is also taking the blood downwards and backward is IPS, that is inferior petrosal sinus. Superior petrosal sinus is going into transverse. Inferior petrosal sinus is joining with what? Is sigmoid sinus. So what do you see here? The sigmoid sinus, it is joined by what sinus? It is joined by the IPS, that is inferior petrosal sinus. It is joined by the inferior petrosal sinus and then both these together the sigmoid and the inferior petrosal sinus, once they comes out of jugular foramen, they together will give rise to the internal jugular vein. Now that also is a question, how internal jugular vein is formed? Internal jugular vein is formed by the two sinuses, one is this, that is sigmoid and the one is this, that is inferior petrosal. When these two sinuses, they join with each other, they together forms the vein and that vein is internal jugular vein, that is an internal jugular vein. <coughs> Let's say internal jugular vein. Now, to me, what is important here for you to remember the direction of the blood flow? Guys, look at this. Superior petrosal taking the blood downward, inferior petrosal taking downward, then we go backward, that's a straight sinus here. Receiving the blood from where? Occipital sinus. All the bl blood get collected into the confluence. From the confluence, it goes into transverse. Then it goes into the sigmoid like this, right? And sigmoid joins with inferior petrosal and then forms what vein? Internal jugular vein. That's how the blood, majority of the blood is coming out of the cranial cavity. But have you noticed that where the superior and the inferior petrol sinus is coming from? The superior and the inferior petrol sinus, it is actually coming from the cavernous sinus here. On the side of the pituitary fossa, that's the side where cavernous sinus is present. I'm going to show it in the next picture also, but just to tell you here, guys, cavernous sinus in this image is here. So that's how the cavernous sinus is actually throwing the blood backward. It is, it is draining the blood backward via superior petrol sinus and inferior petrol sinus. Superior goes into transverse, inferior joins with sigmoid. And I told you that if the clinical questions like there, if there was a question that uh, a tumor is occluding the confluence of sinus, if there is any tumor which is occluding the confluence of sinus, then which of the following dural venous sinus blood will get obstructed? So they gave the options of like transverse sinus, superior petrol sinus, superior sagittal sinus like that. So obviously superior sagittal sinus is the one which is coming towards the confluence of sinus. So any blood which is coming toward the confluence will get obstructed, not the one which is going away from the confluence. And that's why the, the direction is important here. Let's look at the same thing in the transverse section, guys. If I, if I take a transverse section of cranial cavity, see how this is going to look like here. In the transverse section, guys, this picture is going to look like this. Now let me take your attention to backward to this here. This sinus here is once again the straight sinus. Look at that, that's the straight sinus. And what is to be noted in this picture, which you could not appreciate in that section here, that the blood of the transfer straight sinus, mainly it goes toward the left side. Mainly, I am not saying it is going to the confluence also, but mainly it goes toward the left side. And the superior sagittal sinus is the one which is going backward here. Once that superior sagittal sinus blood is the one which is mainly going toward what side? Toward the right side. So it's the superior sagittal sinus which mainly continues to form what sinus? The right transverse sinus. The right transverse sinus. Whereas a straight sinus continues and gives its blood mainly in the left transverse sinus. Although they are meeting here guys. Look at this. This entire is a meeting point for all these sinus. That's a confluence of sinuses. But if the question is asked to you, that right transverse sinus receives the blood mainly from where? So it is receiving the blood mainly from the superior sagittal sinus, the right transverse. Whereas the left transverse sinus, 
is receiving the blood mainly from which sinus? It is mainly receiving the blood from the straight sinus. So you can see the straight sinus is mainly curving toward the, the left side here. Then we know the transfer sinus that drains the blood into sigmoid. So in this picture here, I can see at least on one side that's a sigmoid sinus, right? That's a sigmoid sinus. You already know about that. Let me again remind you where is the petrous part of temporal bone? Here is the petrous part of temporal bone. If this is a petrous part of temporal bone, you can see the two sinuses coming backward. This is SPS, that is superior petrosal sinus, and this is inferior petrosal sinus. The superior petrosal, inferior petrosal, which are coming from this largest dural venous sinus, and that is what? That's a cavernous sinus. That's the cavernous sinus, guys. That's the cavernous sinus. So, what I can make out from this picture is that whatever blood comes into the cavernous sinus, whatever blood comes into the cavernous sinus, it is drained by the two main sinuses. One is superior petrosal, the direction is this, and one is inferior petrosal, which is in this direction, which is meeting with the sigmoid, right? And they both will go out of the jugular foramen here. The important question now is where cavernous sinus is receiving the blood from? It is about the outgoing. These are the outgoing channels here. Yes. SPS, IPS are the outgoing channels. What about incoming guys? Where the blood is coming from? Cavernous sinus is receiving the blood from different sinuses, different sources I would say. If I just take you on the upper part of this picture, you can see cavernous sinus receives the blood from the orbit. It receives the blood from the brain and it also receives the blood from the meninges also. So guys, input. The incoming channels of cavernous sinus, if I talk about the incoming channels of cavernous sinus in this image only, the incoming channels of cavernous sinus guys, first of all, from orbit. So there are certain veins which are coming from the orbit and draining into the cavernous sinus. And those veins are ophthalmic veins, like we have superior and inferior ophthalmic veins. Superior and ophthalmic vein, sometimes central vein of retina also. Sometimes central vein of retina will also come and drain into the cavernous sinus. So we have superior ophthalmic vein, inferior ophthalmic vein, and central vein of retina, not always, sometimes it can also come back and drain directly into cavernous sinus. So this is the blood coming into cavernous sinus from where? From orbit. Another incoming channel from the, for the cavernous sinus is from the brain. There are certain veins which are coming from the brain and directly draining the blood into cavernous sinus. You have to remember these names for now. One of them is called as superficial, superficial middle cerebral vein. Superficial middle cerebral vein. And then we have inferior cerebral vein. Inferior guys, inferior and not internal. Be careful, it's inferior, not internal. Superficial middle cerebral vein and there is a one which is at the base of the brain called as inferior cerebral vein. And finally, cavernous sinus is also receiving the blood from meninges. That means there are some dural venous sinuses draining directly into cavernous sinus. Again, you have to remember these names for now. One of them is called as sphenoparietal sinus. I can show you the sphenoparietal sinus in the picture, guys. Okay, sphenoparietal sinus, and one another one is called as the middle meningeal sinus. Middle meningeal sinus, like middle meningeal sinus or middle meningeal vein. So middle meningeal sinus. So these are the incoming channels. Now that's again important here. The incoming channels of cavernous sinus. Cavernous sinus is receiving the blood, or the tributaries which are coming inside the cavernous sinus are coming from orbit, are coming from brain and are coming from meninges and these are the one you have to remember the names that these are the incoming channels of cavernous sinus. Incoming channels, fine. We just said guys, what about outgoing channels? Now when I say outgoing channels of cavernous sinus, when we talk about the outgoing channels of cavernous sinus, you already have two names in your mind, the petrosal. One of the outgoing channels of the cavernous sinus is superior, uh, superior petrosal. superior petrosal sinus which you saw draining into the transverse and then there was inferior petrosal sinus then there was inferior petrosal sinus which is draining into the 
the sigmoid or joining with the sigmoid here. And here is one more, guys, and that is superior ophthalmic vein. And don't be surprised by looking at superior ophthalmic vein in the outgoing channel. I'll tell you why. Superior petrosal, inferior petrosal, and superior ophthalmic vein. Now you will say that superior ophthalmic vein, we also wrote this here as well. In the incoming channels, and I'm writing it outgoing. Yes, it is there in both. Superior ophthalmic vein is an emissary vein. Emissary veins are the veins without valve. There is no valve in it. So blood can go out through them and the blood can come in through them. So anything is possible, guys. Superior ophthalmic vein is not having any valve. So it can allow the blood to go out also, allow the blood to come inside. So it can act both as incoming channel and also as an outgoing channel also. So you have to count that in both here. So this is about the cavernous sinus, the incoming channels and the outgoing channels here. And that's how you're going to identify them. The relative, relative things on the, on, the, on the picture here. Obviously, nobody is going to ask you to identify these veins on the picture. If it at, at all, it has to be identification of the dural venous sinus. It's a very simple one. Either they will ask you sagittal sinuses, confluence, sigmoid, or any sinus which is in the posterior cranial fossa here. You should be able to identify the sinus in the posterior cranial fossa mainly. Right. So this is a little about the, the dural venous sinus that you should know about. Now, I need to quickly tell you about some important relations of cavernous sinus also because cavernous sinus relations are important, guys. Cavernous sinus is having some important medial lateral relations and there are some important clinical aspects which are related to it here. So let me just add a topic of discussion here itself. We'll keep it very simple. We don't have to draw anything complicated here. Guys, in the relations of cavernous sinus, guys, let's say if this here is cavernous sinus in the coronal section. Remember that what we're discussing here, it is a coronal section. See, on the medial side, on the medial side, you will see that the body of sphenoid with sphenoidal layer sinus, cella trussica will be there. So all this pituitary gland is also there as well. So medially, medially pituitary gland the cella tersica and these, these sphenoidal air sinuses. The sphenoidal air sinuses, guys, these are the medial relations of cavernous sinus. These are present on the medial side of cavernous sinus. Every relation is important. Clinically, it's important. There are so many syndromes which are related to the cavernous sinus, guys. Uh, superior orbital facial syndrome, you know, cavernous sinus, uh, uh, Carotido cavernous fistula, you know, a pulsating proptosis. So for that, you need to know the relations here. So pituitary gland, cella tersica, sphenoidal layer sinus, they are on the medial side. In the floor of cavernous sinus is foramen lacerum. Foramen lacerum, guys. That means it is resting on the foramen lacerum here. The cavernous sinus is resting on the foramen lacerum. So this is in the floor. In the lateral wall, third nerve, fourth nerve, ophthalmic nerve, oculomotor nerve, trochlear nerve, and ophthalmic nerve. And ophthalmic nerve are in the lateral wall, along with, along with, the primary auditory area, guys. That is uncus. There is a part of the temporal lobe called as uncus that is also present toward the lateral side here. So toward the lateral side, this gyrus here. This gyrus basically is a primary olfactory area and this primary olfactory area, which is a part of temporal lobe is called as uncus, U-N-C-U-S, uncus. So these all relations are present toward the lateral side. They are all lateral relations. So third nerve, fourth nerve, ophthalmic nerve along with uncus here. Maxillary nerve, guys, I'm not drawing here. Many atlas shows maxillary nerve in the lateral wall, but according to Gray's 41st edition, it says maxillary nerve is not in the lateral wall. It is 
outside and below the lateral wall of cavernous sinus. So, let us go with the Gray's anatomy in this. It just includes three nerves in the lateral wall of oculomotor, trochlear and ophthalmic. What is inside? Inside the cavernous sinus, we have internal carotid artery. It is going through it, internal carotid artery and just inferior lateral to the artery is the abducent nerve also. So, these structures are inside guys, these structures are inside the cavernous sinus. Internal carotid artery and what nerve? Sixth nerve, abducent nerve, the only nerve that you see which is running through the cavernous sinus here. So, these two structures are present inside or running through the cavernous sinus. Internal carotid artery is not only running inside the cavernous sinus, it makes a carotid siphon, it makes a loop and comes above the cavernous sinus also. So, you will see internal carotid arteries present above the cavernous sinus along with optic chiasma, along with optic chiasma here. So, once again guys, internal carotid artery and optic chiasma, these two structures will be seen where in the roof of the cavernous sinus, in the roof of cavernous sinus. So, in this section I can make out the floor is having foramen lacerum, roof is having internal carotid artery and optic chiasma, the structure running through cavernous sinus is internal carotid artery and sixth nerve, in the lateral wall we have third nerve, fourth nerve, ophthalmic nerve and uncus and medial relation is all the pituitary gland, cella, tersica, sphenoidal air sinus, these are all medial relations of cavernous sinus. Because it is a coronal section, so I cannot see the anterior and the posterior relation here guys. What is the anterior and posterior relation of cavernous sinus? That can be understood from this previous picture only. Look at this guys. If you look at this image here, the anterior relation of cavernous sinus is a superior orbital fissure. Can you see that? That is a superior orbital fissure here. And the posterior relation of cavernous sinus is the apex of petrous temporal bone. What bone is that? That is a petrous part of temporal bone. So, apex of the petrous temporal bone is a posterior relation. So, again the two relations that I would uh, let me write that for you, that anterior relation, the one which is not mentioned here, the anterior and posterior in the coronal section, so what is the anterior and posterior relation here guys, the anterior relation is the superior orbital fissure and the posterior relation is the apex, apex of petrous temporal bone. apex of the petrous temporal bone. So, these are very, very important relations of cavernous sinus. This is what you need to know about the dura mater and dural venous sinuses guys. You should know about how the sinuses are running, what direction the blood is running into, how it comes out, how internal jugular vein is formed. Then straight sinus goes toward the left side, superior sagittal goes toward the right side and then cavernous sinus, incoming channels, outgoing channels. So again, very frequently asked question about the cavernous sinus, incoming and outgoing channels and the relations of cavernous sinus are important, they are important from the, the clinical perspective also, no? carotid or cavernous fistula, if the carotid ar internal carotid artery ruptures inside the cavernous sinus, that will lead to the carotid or cavernous fistula and that carotid or cavernous fistula can push the content of orbit, every pulsation of internal carotid artery will push the content of the orbit and can cause pulsatile proptosis also. This is something that you will read or must have read in the ophtha ward, but just an anatomical basis that because cavernous sinus anterior is superior orbital fissure. So, if there is a pulsation of the cavernous sinus, there will be pulsation of the orbital content as well, which leads to pulsatile proptosis, pulsatile proptosis.